Hello, my name is Gar Verk, and I'm an engineer at Intel, and in this video I'm going to talk about 9 things I wish I knew when I became an engineer. Number 1. It's literally impossible to know everything, so don't feel like an idiot when, not if, you don't know something. A lot of engineers come out of college thinking they're a fully baked engineer, and while we are engineers, there's still a lot we have to learn. The way I always talk about it to new graduates is that college just gives you the tools you need to then be able to tackle engineering. It does not give you all the answers. That is impossible. There is no point in your career in which you will ever know everything. In fact, if you come across an engineer that claims they know everything, ooh, big red flag. Because it's impossible. Just like in any other relationship, you can't give this promise of being a perfect person. You can just show that you're doing your best and that you're open to learning. Being an engineer is no different than being in a relationship. The sooner you accept the fact that you will not be a perfect person, the better it bodes for your relationship, both in engineering and a romantic setting. And I don't know if this will have the same effect for you, but to me it's been kind of liberating, accepting that I will literally not ever know everything I need to know. It means I can stop focusing on trying to get all the knowledge and just focus on which knowledge I need. So yeah, don't come into engineering thinking now you need to know everything. Just come into engineering knowing that whatever is presented to you, you will be able to handle. And also promise yourself that you will never stop learning. You hear about this with couples sometimes. You know, they reach a point where they're like, well, we've done everything, we know what each other likes, that's it. That's the end, right? But when you reach that supposed plateau, you need to look inward and realize that there is so much more to learn. That in fact, there are infinite amounts of things that you can learn. But now you need to pick what do you want to focus on. And by the way, in engineering, people are going to ask you your opinion on things. They don't expect you to always know the answer. It's just engineers are lazy. If you have the answer just off the dome, then I'll take it. No use in me going to look for it myself if you have it. So yeah, you're not expected to know everything. It'd just be nice if you did know a thing, you know? Number two, working with people is a big part of the job. There's a stereotype that exists with engineers, right? That we just put our noses down to a book and we just learn. Another thing you hear is that engineers are antisocial, which leads us to believe that, oh, engineers just work in a cubicle by themselves alone. Isolation, you know, they're cloistered away over there. But that's not true. Engineers are always working in groups. And so it's very worthwhile to kind of work on your people skills. They call them soft skills in interviews. You know about that, right? But they're just skills that, you know, make it easy to be around you. <laughs> sure, you can be good at math and programming, but if someone doesn't want to spend a 30 minute meeting with you, that's kind of going to be a problem. So even though there's this big stereotype that exists that engineers are antisocial, they work alone, they just do math by themselves, it's actually a very social job. And the sooner you understand how to navigate people and work with others, the better it will be for you and <laughs> the other people you have to work with. Number three, you must know how to program. And I'm not even talking about some like deep level of coding. You just kind of have to be a little bit literate. It's like if you were to go to Mexico and you needed to order a meal for you and your family. It's that level of Spanish that you'll need is the same amount of coding language that you'll need. You just need to be able to have these conversations. You don't have to be completely fluent. You just need to know enough. But I speak from experience. This is something my manager told me and I will tell you. The quicker you come to terms with the idea that coding is inextricably linked with engineering, the better you will be. And again, I'm not saying that you have to be fluent in coding and then you know you have to code for like 10 hours a day. I'm just saying if someone shows you some code, it shouldn't be a completely alien language to you. And the quicker you come to terms with that, the better your life will be. Number four, you're never going to be able to explain your job well to others. As an intern, you do a bunch of different stuff because you're shadowing people and just picking up work where you can. So naturally, you would think that when you start working full time, that your job would be concrete and well defined. No. If anything, your scope widens and it takes like five minutes to adequately explain to other people what you do for a paycheck. Both my parents are engineers and I used to think they were pulling my leg when I was younger when they just couldn't describe what it is they do for work. But now I get it. No, I get it. I, <laughs> because if you were to ask me, what, Garb, what do you do for work? It's, it's not good. It's just like a lot of talking and then you have no option but to say, oh, cool. So did you do anything this weekend? It's just not, it's not a worthwhile conversation to have, I would say. Number five, you can still ask for help. Just because you're not an intern anymore doesn't mean you have to stop asking people stuff. It is important that you remain curious and proactive. When I was an intern, the most common piece of advice I would always get is that you should ask as many questions as you want because you're an intern. 
we don't expect you to know anything. <laughs> and that's what an internship is for. It's just for you to learn as much as you can. You're trying to figure out what career do I want? Is this the place for me? Is this the job I want to do? So it makes sense to give an intern like free reign on the whole question asking thing. But then when we come into engineering, like I said, we think we're supposed to be just an engineer that knows everything. And so we take away our privilege of asking people questions and we just try to work alone. But remember what I said earlier too, that engineers work with groups. So use your groups. They actually like it, believe it or not. Yeah, engineers like to prove that we know what we're talking about. And who better to prove that to than a youngin coming up, you know? <laughs> so yes, don't take away your privilege of asking people questions. Keep doing that because the people that get promotions, the people that others want on their team are the most proactive folks. So keep being hungry, but don't push it. Okay, there's a point where you become a nuisance and then, you know, you know the point. <laughs> Number six, there's an acronym for everything. So anytime you come across an acronym, write those down. Just have like a document, a universal document, and just write all your acronyms there. So you can refer to that whenever you want. I do it. I have a one note with just every acronym I've ever come across. And do us a favor, please, when you're talking to other engineers, or really anyone, try to keep the whole acronym usage thing down. Can you please not use as many as you think you should? I remember one time I got an email that had so many acronyms, I actually didn't know what it said. I emailed the person back and I was like, can you make this make sense? I didn't say that. I, I just asked like what a couple acronyms meant and I was like I can probably fill in the rest but yeah don't be that person don't use so many acronyms that someone's like I don't even what what what, were... what? <laughs> but when people do inundate you and burden you with the use of acronyms at least try to know what they're talking about okay <laughs> number seven people don't always know how old you are I don't have a profile picture at work I just have a GV you know on the teams thing so all people have to go off of is my voice and I don't know what I sound like but I remember I was working with this group for like months and then I finally met one person in person and they were like how old are you I was like I'm I'm 24 I know <laughs> baby face right they were like no you look 27 but I was just I didn't think you were 24 I thought you were like in your 40s I was like that is that a compliment or is that, <laughs> is that, I don't, that's a read. I don't know what to do with it though. I'm illiterate. I don't know what to do with that read. But the reason I bring this up is that you can't expect people to treat you like your age. They're going to treat you like a mature older person. <laughs> and I know myself, I am not a mature older person. I am a 24 year old. <laughs> if you're in your 20s, you know what I mean by that. That sentence, that hits different. So just understand that when you work with other people, they're not going to be treating you how you think you should be treated. They're going to be treating you how they think you should be treated. And I know in a perfect world, everyone should be treated the same, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Number eight, don't always assume that people know everything that you're doing. You know how much work you're doing, but rarely do other people know how much work you're doing, which means you got to be your own cheerleader, you know, your own hype man, you know, your own club promoter, <laughs> dare I say. Because unless you tell people explicitly, how else are they supposed to know what you're doing? And I don't just mean like walking around being like, hey, this is like the seven things I did today. But just like in conversations, you can work it in. You could be like, yeah, you know, I went on site and then I did this just before I did this. And, um, but yeah, I can take care of your stuff right after I do these three things that I'm also doing. Because a rookie mistake would, you know, when someone comes to you with a task, you'd just be like, yeah, I'll work that in. But a veteran move is being like, yeah, I could probably work that in. I'm actually doing something similar to that. So I could probably, work in tandem with that well you know that whole thing <laughs> there's a sly way to do this there's a way you could do this with finesse try to find that finesse you know because if people don't understand and oh ooh, i hate to use the b word here but if people don't understand how much bandwidth you have they're going to abuse it so just try to make it known exactly what you're doing well not exactly then people will <laughs> then people will know how much bandwidth you have and you might think you have a uh, less than they think you have, you know? You might think you're like filled to the brim and they're like, no, I think you could take this on. <laughs> so maybe don't, maybe don't say exactly what you're doing. That's, I think what I'm saying is just uh, look busy. Okay, do that, look busy, do that. Mm -hmm. And finally, number nine, be familiar with your days off. That's right, every company is probably different, but I know how it works at my company is that there are wellness days, floating holidays, sick days, days off, carryover holidays. You gotta be familiar with all of these and like the nuance with all of them, like which holidays carry over which holidays carry over in your state. That's right, there's some states where like you can't carry over vacation. Like I'm in California, so 
vacation days I didn't use last year carry over. But someone in, I think, Oregon, their carryover vacation days don't exist. You didn't use them last year? Too bad. No, that's so sad. I'm crying. I'm crying for you. No, that's so sad. So yeah, you're working hard, okay? It means you deserve to take time off. So understand how you can do that effectively and efficiently. You're probably leaving PTO on the table. Oh, rookie move, I tell you. Fun fact, actually, about this coming January. I think there's one Monday. If you take that off, too, I think you get like four, four day weeks in a row. Look into that. I think that's right. But yeah, kind of like scope these things out. Oof, that was a very cor corporate thing to say. <laughs> yeah, just uh, go ahead, scope out your future, what your goals are. You're gonna forecast your success. That's another thing. You're gonna start talking very corporate in your daily life, and you should put a stop to that as soon as you can. But yes, look into your vacation days and use them best you can. So yeah, those are nine things I wish I knew when I became an engineer. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, Let's go ahead and circle back in a future video, okay? <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and give you just a couple minutes back here, all right? See you in a future one, folks. All right, bye.